Mic check, one, two. Welcome back to the podcast. Very, very important for me to flex the fact that um, this podcast has been heavy over the years, although I've taken a bunch of breaks from it. Um, But I thought that quarantine and COVID and uh, me being able to uh, make the podcast right now and not have to worry about focusing on Chicago life hardcore um, is a perfect timing. So, yeah, um, <clears throat> this is merely a reintroduction to the podcast. Uh, I have a lot of things that I've been working on. I have a lot of things that I'm going to be discussing on the podcast, although um, this particular audio stream is to give you guys a good idea of where the industry is as far as uh, production, um, what I think about it, um, and just kind of like empty out my brain on some things. Uh, I uh, am kind of freestyling too at the same time because I am making my bed. Um, (laughs) Exactly. Uh, If you want to change the world, you have to first make your bed. Um, Came from a really uh, famous military guy. Uh, But uh, uh, if you want to know who that quote is, go look it up for yourself. We got Google nowadays. You really don't have to ask people questions. Some people question formal education because we have YouTube and Google now. Um, YouTube and Google are pretty much educating our young and um, people who have upwards of 50 and 100 plus uh, 100K plus uh, loans on education are rethinking <laughs> their decision making versus uh, picking up a tutorial. Hence, why this channel is so popular. Um, I have not came out and like straight said it, but behind the scenes, I have been educating the ones who weren't able to purchase a formal Berkeley, a formal uh, Juilliard uh, uh, education path. So that would leave you with one conclusion. (laughs) This dude must be a genius. And I'm not trying to big up myself or anything like that. All I need to say is that I grew up in very rural areas in the South, Mississippi, Alabama, and um, had very little, (laughs) very, very little. Uh, No one came to me and said, hey, this is how you fill out a college application. Um, I don't have a huge amount of education. And so that might turn a bunch of you away (laughs) already. Some of you might say, hey, this dude probably does have something important to say, even though um, he did not go to Harvard. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? Um, Even though he should or should have or might want to think about going. All right. So um, that was a heck of a rant. (laughs) It's a heck of a rant. So, um, there's a lot into that and I'm just kind of alley hooping to the next point. Um, or as some of my more educated audience would like to say, they would call it a segue. (laughs) Um, so that was a nice segue into my next point. Um, grew up with very little. So somewhere around 2000. 10 because I've had my YouTube channel for a while um, I decided to um, create content for people who want to be music producers 
that don't have the you there's two ways that you get into this game it's two ways and it's it, it's never going to change um even with the with the algorithms that are on Google and are on YouTube there's there's only a couple ways that you can get into this game and maybe I shouldn't talk about that yet maybe I'll I'll send that I'll I'll, I'll throw the line out on that one and then I'll reel it back in later <laughs> um but I I decided to create a path for people who don't have any idea how to create music at all have zero musical talent <laughs> I'm talking about some of y'all that are listening to this right now um that <laughs> and it's not a bad thing it's not a bad thing um have zero musical talent and have no means to get a form of uh, uh music education or anything like that they don't have money to go to the studio they uh don't some don't even have a desire to become producers uh or musicians at all to create something so simple <clears throat> that almost anybody can pick up a drum machine um and it's 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 true it's practical anybody can pick up a drum machine but not everybody's going to understand how a sequencer works right so okay some people are the smartest in the world and you give them a drum machine and it's chinese or Mandarin or Afrikaans and they speak English or Spanish you don't get it they don't get it so to make a a, 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 a source for people to uh, come to and get an understanding of how sequencing works how uh, to truncate a sample how to uh, create a four bar loop, eight bar loop, 16 bar loop, how to sequence a song, things like this. Okay, so now you have that aspect, right? Then there's another aspect to where uh, the community uh, level of creating um, this synergy where producers are teaching each other, not just on the level of, oh my God. You know, you have a, I'm going to say an A-list producer, right? Coming down to the level of the beginner producer. Some, some of them are doing it now on social media, but they haven't been over the years, right? So <clears throat> now that quarantine has come around, a lot of them are, you know, <laughs> they, they're, they're, they're uh, being more susceptible to this uh, stream of income, this um, uh, connection with your actual fan and follower base and whatnot. Um, and uh, I, I think that uh, A-list producers could find uh, social media uh, in connecting directly with their fans to be a very lucrative um, market because of the fact that A-list producers fans are producers who have fans <laughs> right i know that's heavy but it's 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 um it's a huge pyramid and there are a lot of schemes out there and there's a lot of you know whack information and things like that where you know some producers and these are not a-list producers by the way these are maybe more c d e f list producers <laughs> <laughs> you know what the F stands for um, that create a and not all of the producers that do this are F list producers. I'm just saying in general, there are producers that create sales funnels from YouTube marketing, Twitter, Instagram marketing. And then you click on a video, a link goes to a page and then on the page they have some product that you can download for free. And then it takes you down to, OK. PayPal me X amount of dollars for this next product or whatever. So <clears throat> some of those, I would, I would say a lot of those products are very good. A lot of those products are very lucrative for those producers that are legit. 
at the same time, there are scammers out here, and I'm not trying to dwell on that. I just wanted to kind of throw that out there because I am talking about production and industry and all of this. Yeah, it's a part of it. It's a part of it. Um, a lot of my um, YouTube, I would say, subscribers, followers, fan base, or whatever, uh, you guys, <coughs> excuse me, uh, number one, hate when I clear my throat on the mic. <laughs> <laughs> and uh are used to my voice used to my dry jokes uh used to uh me getting very um analytical and very microscopic when it comes to notation and midi and um what uh it takes to i don't know do something like take a four bar sequence and the notation um and duplicate it into a song or uh, copy and paste the notes into a song and then taking each individual MIDI note out as it dictates for that particular chorus or particular verse or whatever. And if you haven't gotten that, then go look at my content because my content has been there for years. Anyway, so um, being that you guys are, you know, really used to my voice, some of you like it, some of you don't. The ladies usually give me compliment compliments on how they like it and that does make me smile from time to time when I'm drinking my coffee and I'm reading comments. Um, I appreciate that. Uh, <clears throat> so it gives me a level of comfortability to be able to bring the podcast back because the numbers haven't been huge. You know what I'm saying? At the same time, uh, the numbers are there. <laughs> so it's like, okay, am I going to ignore this? Or am I going to put this content out for people to consume because they definitely want it? So here I am. Um, all right. So I've talked about a lot. I probably should end it there. That it's it's easy for me to talk because I'm a rapper as well, and rappers like to hear themselves talk. Um, getting close to about 15 minutes. Maybe I'll do maybe like a 20 minute chat with you guys, and then. Um, Throw some stuff up in the comment section. I know there's going to be trolls and trolling and trollism, poser trolls and <laughs> wannabe trolls uh, in the comments. There usually is at least one, even if that's the only comment. But the thing that really uh, grinds my gears <laughs> or cooks my grits uh <laughs> twist my testicles is uh i probably should leave that one out uh the thing that really gets on my nerves is uh when um there are the knowledgeable trolls knowledgeable trolls they are versed in a particular subject and it doesn't matter what it is it don't have to be music production it could be baseball or it could be anything it could be um coding <laughs> you know what i'm saying um actually that's a good segue too um so you have knowledgeable trolls that know about um the subject matter that i talk about and then they will try to sway uh my subscribers to um believe that they need to do a totally different thing that's probably more complex and that will frustrate them. <laughs> so it's kind of like that antagonist in the class when the teacher's trying to teach, but they sit in the back and they always got, you know, something to say. But then it's like, OK, um, I'm going to give you a little bit of light. And they usually fold up. They usually crumble up like most trolls. When you open the door to the basement and you let light in, they're like, oh, Oh, please don't look at me. I'm hideous. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, some of y'all will appreciate that joke. Some of you were like, oh, he's too real. He's, he's just too real. But, um, no, on a serious tip, um, that was a segue into something. Let me regain my <laughs> thought process because I'm just like thinking about trolls and like, ah, they really, really get to me. <laughs> they really do and sometimes it seems like they, do, they don't but I read all of you guys comments 
I read all of your comments, <laughs> every single comment on every social media platform. Um, probably have too much time on my hands, but I'm very meticulous as to as an artist, when and how I drop songs, um, when and how I do YouTube videos. And I'm very meticulous as to how I move. And um, yeah, anyways, so <laughs> the segue <laughs> was uh, about alternate platforms um, when it comes to music production. Um, I'm not going to delve into it too heavy, which how many minutes do I have left? All right. I hit 15 minutes. I'll just go really quickly. There's alternate platforms and coding now for devices. And um, you have computers now that you can hack everything in the computer and not necessarily hack, but you can recode your L key on your keyboard on the on the computer or on the laptop to be a volume up or anything like the computer is totally open source everything and so that's a conversation for the genius producers out there and when it comes down to ai uh there's uh one particular producer that i really favor that already has had his own ai uh set up uh since jimmy crack corn you know what i'm saying and so um when it comes to uh, coding um, and production, audio, all of those things, voicings, voice recognition, eye recognition, um, and, and things of that nature, um, you know, the Tony Stark uh, type of lab setup for producers. That's where uh, this conversation comes into play. Um, and not to get too deep, I'm not going to stay on this, but... Uh, there's a couple of uh, producers out there that I've seen lately that are doing things that are <laughs> off the chain game. And so um, I think I just aged myself when I said off the chain game. <laughs> Anyways, um, so when it comes to these alternate platforms and when it comes to this uh, uh production coding um, and things of that nature, it's totally left up to the imagination what you can do in your own lab. You're Tony Starks. You can create an Iron Man costume. You can, uh, not costume, suit. <laughs> he's not real. Yes, he is. No, he's not. Um, <laughs> your lab can be what you want it to be. And so uh, I am uh, in the market for a uh, some cafe con leche right now um i know that was a <laughs> random thought but y'all know i'll be on that coffee so um yeah beds made time for coffee um do -do 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 do tony stark laboratory and whatnot you can basically um do what you want with the devices that we have available to us now i imagine there are companies out there like the ones that i promote that are going to start producing not producing well that's kind of like a play on words they're going to start making products that are open source that have open source capabilities that you don't necessarily have to have a beta uh <laughs> It only does this, you know, beta versus versus VHS. But then we have this new media that comes out called a DVD. And then we have this new media that comes out as digital format. You know, um, everything's digital now, you know, and of course, producers, especially even some of the younger producers that I um, really admire now, they have a love for analog as well. And so they're starting to run their digital content back through a cassette back through uh the reel to reel um in order to get that warm sound and some of them are even still creating the the old analog way in which i don't want to call analog production the old way i want to say that it is the most challenging way um to learn and then it's also the <sighs> i'm gonna get some flack for this 
I, I will say this. Analog bass sounds better than digital bass. While digital bass does a good job of mimicking analog, there's nothing like analog bass. But that has nothing to do with what I'm talking about. Digital, digital bass, whatever you're making digital, whether it be video, uh, whether it be, um, I don't know, this podcast is going straight into my digital device right now. Um, it's capable of being manipulated and it's capable of being sampled and it's capable of being uh, treated with all different types of uh, filters and um, effects, um, auto tone, you know, all these different things. Um, while everything's uh, not everything, it, well, I would say life in general is almost becoming digital itself. <laughs> it's crazy. It's kind of scary. But uh, we spend a lot of time on Instagram or whatever. But uh, uh, TikTok, with so many things becoming digital and me not seeing um, a lot of those products being created yet, it's definitely going to be a big boom at some point where producers uh, start to look in to um, open source devices that can do whatever they program it to do and have their own presets and have their own settings you know to click on a device with a laptop and this is my at the beach setting this is my in the hotel setting this is my sitting on the couch setting this is my in the kitchen cooking setting where um you can still be creative and not be Ooh, am I at 20 minutes yet? I'm at 22. Uh, you, you won't be a slave to um, what a device does specifically. A pre-programmed knob. This knob will only do this. <laughs> you know, uh, this button will only do this. Whereas some of these open source controller devices, a button can act as a knob, a knob can act as a button. It's all, it all depends on what you want it to do. It could have a value of one. It could have a value of 127. It could have a pressure point of only, you know, six. Or you can program it up to have a pressure point of 16. You can, you know, you could, you could route that any type of way you want as a filter, as MIDI, as, a, as audio. <laughs> Uh, as a sample, whatever. So, um, yeah, I guess that's a good uh, place to uh, leave this particular podcast. Um, I appreciate you guys. I'm at like 5.1K subs and I'm um, just pushing for 10K, you know, at this point. Um, but, uh, yeah, I'll settle for 5.2, though. You you feel me? Like, I'm I'm being very humble with this growth and... Um, it's been a slow, long, steady growth. And so I don't necessarily have to hit some algorithm in YouTube to get wildly successful and popular, although that would be amazing. <laughs> All right, guys, girls, uh, youngins, um, I, I have a significant amount of followers that are over 50 and 60. And so I appreciate you guys as well. Um also, the, you know, the 12 and 13 year olds that just got a, um, a piece of equipment for Christmas or for a birthday that hits me up in my comment section. I appreciate all of y'all. Um, just want to say one love. I need to get into this coffee right now. And uh, yeah, blessings and peace. Spread love. I'm out.